Hello, friends and family. Today I want to talk about our dedication to healing. It's day 91, cycle five, day six. If you're new here, I'm Jen. If you've been before, thank you so much for coming back. Welcome, one and all, to my quest to crush aggressive, diffuse, large B-cell lymphoma, DLBCL, stage four. We're using the R Epoch immunotherapy, chemotherapy to crush non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Thank you so much for joining me on the journey today. All right, so let's get into it. I'm going to start with some quotes and then we'll talk about my thoughts and then we'll move on. <laughs> I have come to understand that some of the deepest and most effective healing is not found at a doctor's office or a hospital, but rather from inside ourselves. Our bodies are designed for self-healing, and we are capable of both boosting and blocking that ability. Dr. Daju Suzanne Friedman. Second quote. It's not all about healing yourself. It's just as importantly about letting yourself heal. Terry Gilemetz. My best guess. All right, so as I said, my focus today is on healing or the dedication that we have to healing. And you know, this is a partnership. Um, in the conversation we had a few few days ago, maybe this week, weeks, I'm an active participant, right? I, I'm not just the patient, I'm an active patient. I have to give and take with the doctors and nurses and science. They've done their job. They've thrown the chemicals and all their knowledge at this cancer to, to help kill, kill it, right? Get rid of the cancer, get it out of there. But now it's my job to give myself the grace to heal, right? And we've talked about this on every cycle um, and they've all kind of struck me differently. You, um, but my focus, my dedication right now, what I have to do as being an active participant is giving myself grace, recognizing that I can't do all the things that I normally do at the same level that I want to do them, to really focus internally, to allow myself time to heal, give my body the time to recover. So that is where I am right now. Next question. How am I? Um, I think you might be able to tell. Overall, I'm better than I expected for day six, right? I don't know if you guys remember. I don't know if it was day six or day seven in cycle four. I can look it up. But there was one day when I couldn't even get the the video out. Like I was just totally was, I was unable to get it out. <laughs> and maybe that was day eight. So maybe I'm off a, day, a couple days here. But I definitely am feeling better, I think, than I was definitely in cycle four. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, I am feeling the chemotherapy and I'm feeling the impact of the chemotherapy. So I don't want it to sugarcoat it. It is not rainbows and unicorns, right? But I, um, I definitely feel much better than cycle four at this stage. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, and I am trying to focus on being gentle with myself and allowing myself time to heal. So that's where I am. I think um, even in these days, in the next probably five days or so, regardless of how great I may feel, I'm going to continue to remind myself, don't do that. That's going to overwhelm your system and you're going to feel horrible if you do that. And maybe that's where I went wrong in cycle four. Maybe I was feeling good enough that I was pushing and I shouldn't have been pushing. So maybe that's the secret sauce. I don't know. But for now, grace, heal. These are my, this is my attitude. This is where I'm coming from. Okay, angel delivery. I'm just going to pop these right over my face. You don't need to see me for that. Um, I got some beautiful flowers today um, with a lovely card. Something, I think the card's shown in one of the pictures, but it was something about, you know, looking forward to spring and, you know, healing, feeling better and all that kind of stuff, which was quite lovely. Thank you so much. So I want to just make one quick comment here. It's not a concern because we've been following it very carefully. Um, I believe... We talked about this early on, but um, myself and Bill, actually, as a transplant patient, um, we both have to be careful about what's called neutropenic precautions. So you're neutropenic when your white count or your immune system falls below the safe area. And usually the white count, I think, is around five. 
So just to put this in perspective, there was a time, it was probably a couple of years ago now, that Bill could not get his white count above like one and a half to two. Like he was severely neutropenic. Like we were wearing masks around him to keep him safe. This is be long before COVID. <laughs> so, and, and when you're neutropenic, there's many precautions you have to take because your immune, we, we all, all of us, take our immune systems for granted to some extent. So if you eat something that's not quite clean, you know, that whole, uh, you know, we're the whole generation of you eat dirt, what's the big deal, right? But if your immune system isn't there to protect you, then when you eat dirt, there are bacteria and germs and things that your body can't protect you from and you get sick, right? And it's similar for neutropenic. So um, neutropenic precautions include, you know, super duper scrubbing any foods, um, produce, and making sure there is no dirt on your food <laughs> and cooking your food, no raw foods. And when you do have raw foods like lettuce and, and um, salads and stuff, they have to be very well scrubbed and cleaned. Um, no standing water. So this was an issue if you have animals, obviously no litter boxes. Um, I'm trying to think what else. No standing water. Dust and dirt is a, is a concern because you might breathe it in and you don't have the immune system to protect yourself from it. So all these things are concerns for neutropenic um, precautions. And um, therefore, I, I think you heard me say standing water. So flowers are really no good. Cut flowers. If you, get, if you had a plant and it was already planted, I'm not playing in the dirt, then that is safe. Um, now, with all that said, neither Bill nor I have been neutropenic um, in the last six months. <laughs> Uh, I've been very fortunate, right? We've been watching my white count. It's never gone below six. So uh, that's all good. The, the flowers are beautiful and thank you. But I just wanted to caution folks. Um, flowers are not always the best option, particularly for cancer patients <laughs> that are going through chemo. I've been doing quite well. You know, I think I've told you several times that the doctor has been thrilled with how I'm holding up. And I am thrilled as well. Um, but it is a precaution and something to consider just for the future. I just a little bit of education there. But again, thank you so much for these beautiful flowers. They were just lovely and very uplifting. All right. Doctor news. I think I mentioned yesterday that the nurse said add Pepsi that might help. So today, last night I did, uh, we'll talk about this a little, a little later, but I did take um, Compazine and Zofran before bed, which I have been doing which are anti anemics to prevent nausea. And then this morning, I was just kind of hunting through the, the medicine cabinet. And it turns out we had a whole bottle of Hepcid unopened. It must have been must have bought it for Bill or the boys. I don't know. But it was unused. It wouldn't even matter if it was used, right? And I took Pepsid this morning with my morning pills. And overall, I think it made a difference. And you probably noticed I still have that little teeny piece of gum to help me get through the get through this hump. But you know, it, it's working. So I it's now it's difficult to say, you know, that nausea, is it nausea? Is it heartburn that's making the nausea come? I, I think I shared with you before that chemo mouth, that taste in your mouth actually triggers some of the, the nausea. So maybe I think the gum and the root beer barrels and maybe even the pepsin is helping to prevent that, you know, some of that taste. So thumbs up there. No complaints on the pepsin. I did go to the center today to get my shot. And then the final thing... <laughs> We got the lab results and I had a little lab scare and it was all in my mind, thankfully. Thumbs up there. So let me talk a little bit about it and um, I'm going to look and maybe I'll flash some of this on the screen for you. So my white count actually came up to seven. Um, when was this? This was yesterday. Today it was down to six again, but that's after the cytoxin. So that was not bad. Overall, when you look at the, um, and I'm not sure I'm going to share these numbers with you because meh. But overall, when you look at the blood counts, the CBC, um, they're kind of out of whack. I got some lows, I got some highs, I got some lows. And that's consistent with somebody that's being treated for chemotherapy because your bone marrow is damaged, I'll call it, and therefore your body um, isn't producing properly, okay? And as the chemo leaves the system, you know, your body fights back. And that's why it's so important for me to give myself the grace to heal because that you know, obviously your blood is a very important part of your whole uh, system. Okay. Um, protein, albumin, all those, all those numbers are good. All my electrolytes look good, right in range. 
calcium, which we were following before. Uh, sorry, I, I moved on to the comprehensive metabolic panel, CMP. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll flash the calcium up here on the, the screen. I think, oh, 9.3. So it's continuing to come down and it is well within range. So the thing that was scary to me today was my bun theatinin ratio. And that went, I got, I'll, I'll flash this for you, but I think it was in the 20s-ish. And it jumped to 37.9, which is well out of range. The range is 10 to 28 for the bun creatinine. And that's, a, um, I had been, bun creatinine ra ratio. So I'd been previously taught that this is a measure of our kidney function. And when it gets out of whack like this, it could be an indication for heart issues or kidney issues. And these are all concerns for this chemotherapy. So I was kind of wigging out a little bit. So I texted my doctor. <laughs> And then he called me back with it. He actually called me back within like 15 minutes, which I was pretty impressed with. And he's like, I don't understand what your issue is. Your numbers look great. I'm like, if, if we're going to be worried, this is a good thing to be worried about. So it turns out he doesn't ever even look at the ratio anymore. He looks at the individual piece parts. And when you look at the individual piece parts, they aren't that alarming. So bun um, is normal range 6 to 20. And it was 17 the last time. And that one's been creeping. It's been around 20. It came up, it went up to 22. So that was a little bit of concern, but he thinks that that's because I'm dehydrated. I'm like, how can I possibly be dehydrated because of everything I'm drinking? And he's like, well, it could be just depend on when they took the blood compared to when you drank and everything. And, um, and we did learn yesterday that if you drink a lot, which I do, then if you have any deficits, then it, they might reflect as dehydration. Again, all my electrolytes are in balance. So if it's dehydration, it's not heavy. That's for certain. Okay. Um, and then the creatinine is 0.58, which is in range. The range is 0.49 to 1.02, but it was a little higher than creatinine last la the last time we, we took it. So the the ratios, when, when one's a little higher, one's a little lower, that made the ratio go bananas, right? That's essentially what happened. But the high is only a smidgen out, and the low is actually in range. So it's not really that low. So he felt that, that this was truly nothing to um, be concerned with. And then the final thing that convinced me that he was right, although I don't know why I even have these conversations with myself, because he's the doctor and he has many more years of experience, is the GFR, which is another measure of the kidney function. And the rate, normal range there is anything above 60, and I'm 106. So everything, everything looks good, essentially. I was worried about nothing fabulous, right? <laughs> I guess if you have to be worried about something, it's something, it's good to be worried about something that's not really broken. So thumbs up there. Then finally, um, the ALKFAS, AST, and AL, these are all liver enzyme um, measures, and they're all well within normal and down. So you know that those were all crazy high in November when we started this, when the liver was engaged and had cancer. So the, all good signs, right? And the final very exciting piece of information is my LDH, my lactase de dehydrogenase. Sorry, I'm not sure if I even came close on that one. Um, the, that, my LDH was 152. So the normal range for um, LDH is 135 to 214. And you'll remember that that was over 1800 for quite a while and then started to trend down and um, Last time we did it was like 202, so it was pretty well within the range, but the one before that was like 217 or something. So we saw it coming down, but 152 is remarkable. And again, this is another indicator that the um, multiple organs are no longer engaged and or the trauma to the body has decreased greatly. So all indications by the blood work is that, that this the, the, the chemotherapy is working. And we know that that was reinforced. Uh, by the PET scan that we had at the end of cycle three, which I can share right here, um, the PET scan results. But I, hopefully you guys have all seen that already. So that is my doctor news for today. All right, so let's talk about my ta-da list for today. So what did I do today? Checking the list. I actually did a lot, and I'm, I think that was a little bit of why I started to not feel so great. So I tried to scale it back. Uh, all right, so ta-da, I did go to work for half a day. I did hydrate. I did rest. I did not sleep, but I did get into bed for an hour and a half to two hours, I think, and just relaxed and did nothing, you know. I put in a Costco order. <laughs> 
I did make the boys bring it in and put it away. So I did all I did was the ordering part. Um, we actually got Bob's old PC set up. I was using it just before for the quotes. Actually, I did not do that. Bill did that, <laughs> but I did motivate him to do it. So that was that made me very happy because my old laptop just wasn't cutting it. And I hard boiled some eggs. I bought uh, some crazy amount of dozens of eggs from Costco. So I immediately hard boiled a dozen. Um, I think I've shared with you before, I use my Instapot for hard boiling the eggs and I use the 555 method, which is absolutely amazing. Um, five minutes um, in the pressure cooker to get to pressure, you know, five minutes you set the pressure cooker for, five minutes you leave in, in the pressure cooker. And then after those five, the 10 minutes, right, five and five, and it's a little more because it has to get to pressure, then you dump it into an ice bath. Um, and then five minutes in the ice bath and then you can peel them and the peels fall off, like fall off because the eggs shrink just a wee bit and it's awesome. And they're just perfect, just perfect, the eggs. So I'm very happy. Now I'll caveat that with if you're in a different um, elevation and those types of things, you have to adjust your 555 to a little bit different numbers based on elevation. But I, I think you can Google that. But amazing. Only way I cook eggs now. <laughs> And it was a dozen in 15 minutes. I mean, come on, maybe 20, but amazing. All right. So that is what I accomplished today. Oh, and I, I had a robotics meeting. I guess I should have mentioned that. All right. So my to do must for tomorrow, I must rest. I must hydrate. I must heal. These are the only things on my must list for tomorrow. I might not even get out of my pajamas. We'll see. <laughs> uh, we'll see how it goes. Excuse me. So these are my, this is my list for tomorrow. These are the things I am absolutely focusing on. All right. What would I love to do on my, submit the warranty for my broken headphones. <laughs> I have pulled the information. They're less than a year old. And I think I can maybe either get them replaced or um, get some kind of reimbursement to get something new. I do love them. They fit my ears, but they're just not working quite right. So I looked up all that information yesterday, but I haven't gone through the effort to, to, to submit the email and all that stuff. Uh, I still would like to order my phone, dongle, hub, etc. Maybe I'll spend some time while I'm relaxing in bed looking that up. Um, I do have a robotics meeting tomorrow, so if I'm feeling up to it, I'll, I'll attend. If not, and I would like to crochet. Um, I didn't really get to crochet in cycle four too much. Maybe that was a difference. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but I would like to spend some time working on a crochet project. I think that would help me, you know, meditate. I, I've described to you guys before that crochet for me is an act of meditation. So that might help me to relax, actively meditate, feel like I'm accomplishing something while I'm giving my body time to heal. So that's where I'm at. I was able to do a wee bit of charity miles today. I didn't do any concentrated exercise today. I believe I've already reached my 7,000 steps, but I didn't like, that was just kind of getting around. Um, I didn't have an opportunity, maybe 10 minutes where I just gently walked around the house, but I'm very cautious about pushing my body right now because I seem to fail when I do that at this time in the cycle. I forgot to look up how many miles we have. I, um, so I'm going to put that on the screen as I always do. So out of you, thank you so much for your effort. If you're interested in joining our charity miles, the link is down below in the description. And that is what, that's what we got. All right. So if you're just here for story time, thank you so much for joining today. And we will see you tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Let's get into daily symptoms and statistics. Lightning round. Nausea. Real. I took the meds last night. Pepsid and gum today is helping. Um, I'd say better managed than I expected at this point in the cycle, but still real. So I'm going to give that, uh, I don't even know. I wouldn't say it's increased. I'll have to look at the, the, the marks. Mouth pain is still there. Not overwhelming me, but it is there. That's a yes. Teeth pain, no. Throat pain is still a bit. My weight is up a little smidgen, x6.65. I forget what we were yesterday, maybe 6.5. So let's see um, if tomorrow it starts to come down with the um, prednisone coming off board. It might not be until the end of the week. Whatever. Um, my fluid in, 
was 104 ounces by mouth, which is um, 3.08 liters. And then I had another 0.5 liters, if you'll recall, um, from the chemo. I'm not sorry, not from the chemo, from, from IV, right? By IV. So that puts me at 3.6. Oh, no, it doesn't. I forgot 0.2. So I'm at 3.8. My in was 3.8. And my out was 4.2 liters. So last night was 4 hours and 54 minutes, 54 minutes, and I hope to improve that tonight. Obviously, I don't have to get up tomorrow for work or anything. Rest, rest, rest. And also, um, prednisone hopefully is coming off board. Now, as a side note, um, yesterday on my way to the doctor and the way home, and today on my way to the doctor on the way home, I had Diet Coke both days. And that is really the only caffeine that I've had in weeks since the last time I went through a cycle. So certainly the caffeine is going to impact me as well, but hopefully in the next day or two, my sleep patterns will get a little bit more normal. Um, as I already mentioned, as far as naps go, I did not sleep, sleep, nap, like unconscious, but I did definitely shut down and rest. I took the day off starting around noon and I got in bed and I really relaxed um, for several hours. All right, my movement was 7,800 steps, which is a little bit down with restorative poses. My vitals were fine. Um, the neuropathy, it's a bit. I think it's increasing a little bit, but I'm going to keep it at a bit. I won't go up or down there. Stat hair, hair loss is status quo. Skin is status quo. Nose clots, I'm going to say no. They're actually down, so that's a decrease. Um, why? I think the nose clots are directly related to my white count. So when the white count starts to really tank, then I get more of the clotting. But as it goes up, then 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 I go away. But I'm not sure. I guess we'll see because I took my Nelasta shot today. So if, it, if they're gonna, go, it's gonna go up, and we'll see what happens with the nose clots. Okay, night sweats, yes. Headache, no. Fatigue, mm, I have a yes here. But that was from earlier. I'm not really feeling fatigue. I'm gonna say a bit. So that's down for now. Red skin is also down. I'm going to say no. So I have a couple downs. That's good news. And no chemo brain. Although I did make a horrible mistake at work yesterday. It was ridiculous. Like somebody asked me to look at something. And when I looked, I couldn't find it anywhere. It was right there on the screen. But I think that's just old age or bad eyes or not focusing. I don't think that was chemo brain. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so, so much for joining me. And I will see you tomorrow. Remember, every day is a gift. Live it. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you tomorrow.